Let's understand what the vanishing and exploding gradient problem is. Here we have our example neural network. The forward propagation works like this. AL is the activation function obtained by passing the term Z from the previous layer through the activation function F. Here, Z is the weighted sum of inputs from the previous layer plus the bias term. The prediction from the output neuron is Y hat. After forward propagation, we calculate the error or loss. From here, we update the weights and biases through back propagation, right? Now, the vanishing or exploding gradient problem occurs exactly at this step during back propagation. So let's say we want to calculate the gradient for the first weight in the last layer. This gradient is calculated using the chain rule. Now, if this is going over your head, don't worry, just check out the video series on deep learning that I have made, especially the one on backpropagation. It's essential to understand this concept. The link is in the description below. Now, in this chain of derivatives, the main culprit that can cause these problems is this term, the derivative of the activation function. If we simplify this, it looks like this, where f is the activation function that we use. Let me give some examples of activation functions that can potentially cause these problems. Let's start with sigmoid. The sigmoid function looks like this, with a range from 0 to 1. Its derivative looks like this, and its maximum value can only be 0.25. A similar situation occurs with tan h, where the function itself ranges from minus 1 to plus 1, while its derivative ranges from 0 to 1. Now keep one thing in mind, if you multiply numbers that are between 0 and 1 repeatedly, the product will shrink towards 0. Conversely, if you multiply numbers greater than 1 repeatedly, the product will explode. This is the basic math behind the vanishing and exploding gradient problem. Now, if we calculate the gradient for any weight in a previous layer, the chain of derivatives grows even longer. Here. This term was calculated from the next layer during backpropagation. And this term here is the derivative of the current layer's expression. So in the gradient, we have two such derivative terms that will get multiplied. Similarly, for a general layer L, the gradient is proportional to the product of many of these derivatives. Next, let's imagine that the activation derivative is a small number, like 0.25. As the number of layers in our neural network increases, the repeated multiplication of this term makes the gradient very small, approaching zero. Now, if the gradient is close to zero, then its product with the learning rate becomes even smaller. This means the weights hardly update at all. This phenomenon is called the vanishing gradient problem, where the gradient essentially vanishes. On the other hand, imagine the derivative value is greater than 1, like 1 1.25. As we go deeper into the network, the gradient grows very rapidly. This causes the product of derivatives to become extremely large, leading to huge and unstable weight updates. This is called the exploding gradient problem. Exploding gradients are usually detected quickly because they cause large, sudden updates, while vanishing gradients are harder to notice at first because the gradient is so small that the weight updates are almost imperceptible. Now, activations are not the only cause of this problem. The gradient is also proportional to the weight values. If the weights are poorly initialized, they can make the problem worse. If weights are too small, they can contribute to vanishing gradients. If weights are too large, they can contribute to exploding gradients in a similar way as repeated multiplication amplifies the effect. In fact, for exploding gradient, large weights are often the main culprit, sometimes even more than the derivative of the activation functions. So it's the interaction between activation derivatives and weight values across multiple layers that leads to these problems. Apart from activation derivatives and weight values, there are other causes as well. If the network is too deep, 
the gradient can decay or grow exponentially, causing problems. If the learning rate is too high, it can lead to exploding gradients, while a very small learning rate can potentially cause vanishing gradients. Additionally, if the input data is not normalized, it can indirectly contribute to these problems because unscaled inputs can push activations into extreme regions affecting gradient flow. Now, there are several methods that help deal with this problem, even if they don't completely fix it. For example, you can use ReLU type activation functions, which help prevent vanishing gradients. You can also use proper weight initialization techniques, which we will discuss in detail in the next video. Other methods include adding residual connections in deep neural networks, or using optimizers like RMSProp or Adam to handle learning rate issues, and applying proper normalization techniques to stabilize activations. I will be uploading detailed videos on each of these topics immediately after this one, so stay connected.